a lot going on. Hey y'all, this is my review for The Real Housewives of Potomac, episode 18. This is the season finale of a very um, lackluster, dark, toxic, uninteresting season. So, you know, we left off on a cliffhanger. They didn't let us know anything what was gonna happen in the beginning, and y'all, I am gagged. Those cameras went right up, right after the fight happened. If you haven't seen the fight, you can look at it on YouTube and then like come back to this review because I looked at that fight at least 30 times in slow motion. I think I have a handle on everything that transpired. But let's just continue on with the immediate aftermath of what happened. So the cameras come back up. We see Ashley just like, what happened? What happened? Girl, you were there. You saw what happened. You saw what transpired. It all happened in front of you. Please do not act shocked. We then see Deborah being escorted out. Uh, Candace is being held back uh, by Sharice. Damn, we then see Kay in the bathroom. Um, she has a towel on her forehead. I'm guessing she's still bleeding from the fight. Uh, Wendy's back there too. Like, she's pissed. Uh, yelling at production. Production, I think, is calling the ambulance. Karen is there. Um, I didn't know she was still there at the party. I thought it was Robin, Giselle, and Karen that all left. But yeah, we see Karen in the motherly role, making sure Kay is all right. We're back outside and Candace is still yelling at Sesame Street. She's like, get that raggedy bitch out. Like called her a cockroach. <sighs> I mean, I get it why Candace is upset, but why she needs to be held back, I, I don't know. It's just mirroring a lot of situations, that's all. But anywho, we all know that Deborah's in the wrong. On her way out, she's letting Ashley know what happened from her viewpoint. She's saying that Kiana hit her first. So we see Deborah's face, and it looked like her hair's just roughed up, but her face is fine. It's intact. So now we're back in the bathroom with Kay. Uh, she's in production know what happened. Karen, like, she wants to go to the hospital with her. Wendy is in hysterics, and I think Kay just wants everyone to just calm down. So then we get a little close-up of Kay's face, and y'all, I was gagged. Because from social media and looking at the video, I was thinking that Deborah was the one that was gonna be walking away with all the lumps and injuries on her face, but damn, like, Kay got scratches all over her face, and then, like, um, bleeding from the top of her forehead? Jeez. And I know the ladies of the cast, they're just like, again? Not again. I really felt bad for Kay because she didn't deserve that. So then we cut to some of the ladies' confessionals on what happened. Uh, Wendy says that she heard Deborah talking to Ashley and, you know, she was aggressively conspiring to do something. We get to Mia. She says she talked to Deborah and told her, like, think of your kids, think of your husbands. Like, why were they fighting in the first place? Then we get to Karen and she says it seemed to be intentional and attention-seeking. And I agree, because we heard the audio and we seen the footage, and I'm pretty sure this was Deborah's fault. She did not have to approach Candace at all. And it really sucks that someone that had nothing to do with the fight is the one headed off to the hospital. So then we get to Kay's confessional, and she's saying that she saw the drink that she threw at Candace, she pushed her away, and that's when Deborah threw the glass at her forehead, and that's when they started scrapping. After seeing the fight, so many times and then hearing the audio. So it looks like Deborah came up to Candace, tried to approach her, tried to have a moment or whatever, and then Candace wasn't having it. She felt some type of way and threw her drink. Now, Kay comes in and I saw it. Like Kay hit Deborah first. She hit her first. There's two things on that. So first I would say Kay shouldn't have made it her fight. Definitely, she should not have intervened. We heard in the audio, like, get your friend, get your friend. Who is this girl? Is this your friend? And then, you know, when she threw the drink, that's when she popped Deborah in the face, and that's when they started scrapping. I feel like Candace can defend herself in that moment. I don't think she needed somebody to help her out. The second way I'm looking at it is, okay, you have someone throwing a drink at my friend. Of course, I'm going to back them up. I'm going to hit them. Like, what are you doing? Especially if I know my friend isn't a fighter. Like, she came at her. But I want to know, is Kiana close to Candace like that? 
Because if she's not, and you know, you just a friend of, like, that's Wendy's friend, like, why are you getting involved in the fight? Because, you know, I was thinking of basketball wives when, um, Oh, what's that girl with the, with the C name? They, they were calling her Chlamydia or something like that. I forgot her name. But when she was rushing up on Jen and then uh, Evelyn made it a point to make it her fight. So I understood that because Jennifer, she's not a fighter. Like she has a, like a slick shade of mouth or whatever, but she would never like rah-rah. Now, Candace is a different type of friend. Candace is rah-rah, and her first reaction was to grab the bottle. So I'm thinking, she's grown, she can handle herself. She didn't need Kiarna to fight her battle for her. Now, that doesn't mean that Deborah didn't deserve to get her ass whooped, because the reason why she rolled up on Candace because she probably thought, Candace ain't gonna hit me if I throw this drink at her. So Kiarna brought the fight to her, and that's how she was gagged, because she didn't think that was gonna happen. I just want to bring up different points of view and how people are looking at the situation. Personally, I wish Katie didn't get involved and made it her fight. Maybe, you know, she felt the need to defend Candace and that was her choice. But moving on, I would love to hear what y'all thought of the fight. I mean, after seeing it, look, we all can agree that it was Deborah's fault. My question is, do y'all think that, you know, Kate could have avoided being in the predicament that she was in? Like, what would y'all have done? Because I just think Candace could have defended herself. My next question will be, though, should we blame Ashley for it? But that's a little bit further in the episode. So we get back to the confessionals, and Karen is like, you can't bring all your friends around certain people. And it looks like she's saying without saying that Ashley was in the wrong for bringing her friends. So then we get to Ashley, who now is trying to basically take the blame off her shoulders. Now, unfortunately for you, Ashley, you are responsible for how your friends act in this situation. You invited them, they're a reflection of you, and you knew the beef that Deborah had with more than one of your castmates. But anyway, according to her, she said, Deborah and Candace are grown, like the club is huge. They didn't have to address each other, but yet your friend came up to Candace in her space. So what did you think was going to happen? Now, I won't go as far to say that Ashley orchestrated this or planned for this to happen, but I definitely think she didn't help de-escalate the situation. So after that next scene, it is two days later, and all the ladies are meeting up at Mia's magazine event where they're going to be unveiling the photo shoot they did in the last episode. <laughs> we see Karen arriving first, and she's with her own hired security. So then Sharissi arrives and we see that she has a boot on her leg. And of course, her and Karen aren't acknowledging each other. So Ashley arrives and we cut to her confessional and she says she put a pause on her and Deborah's friendship. Mostly because we see Deborah went on social media doubling down on the fight. Like has no remorse. Even wrote P.S. Did you enjoy your ambulance ride? Now, you know what everybody gonna bring up when Ashley said that. After Monique's fight, I mean, look, Monique kind of doubled down and Ashley was still in her corner. So, I don't know. The line is always moving! So they're all looking at their photos that's posted around the room. It looks like Ashley doesn't like her photo. And then Karen, she's very vocal about not liking Robin's photo, which I don't think it's that bad. Like, it's giving Mariah, I mean, of course she doesn't look like her, but, you know, she's giving a little Mariah essence. So Giselle arrives with her gay minion, and she says that Ashley told her what happened. Of course she's not happy about it. She's talking to the other ladies. Uh, first, she gives an update on her dad and says that he had the surgery, he's in ICU, and she's going back up to see him, like, probably right after they finish filming. They get to talking about the fight. We hear from Sharissi that the boot on her foot is from trying to restrain Candace from going at Deborah, um, especially with the bottle that she picked up. Now, I know a lot of people had issue with Candace holding the bottle. I mean, hey, if you rah-rah and about that life, do it. Do it. But then, you know, make sure you're ready for the ramifications afterward. I mean, just ask Debrat. Like, she would have been in jail, no matter if Deborah threw a drink on her or not. And I don't think the Candace stands wants to see her behind bars, especially over a reality show. 
over Sesame Street. But then Ashley tells the group what happened from Deborah's perspective. She said that Wendy and Candace were talking about her. She went over to Candace and then Candace started calling her vermin, the help. And I think that's when she threw a drink on her and then Kiana hit her in the face and then they started fighting. Hearing this, which we know is a lie because Deborah lies. Of course, Giselle was like, oh yeah, the mouth, the mouth, the mouth. <laughs> I can't wait for the reunion after them seeing like what happened with the fight and hearing the audio and if Ashley changed her tune. Afterwards, Giselle's gay minion, who's definitely gonna be feeling the heel on social media, tries to pin it all on Candace. Like, I gotta say this isn't Candace's fault. Like, Deborah didn't have to approach Candace. Although, I do think Candace's mom will be writing checks that her ass can't cash. But two things can be true. We gotta keep remembering that, that two things can be true. Anywho, Mia arrives and she's with her whole family, Gordon and the kids. Everything looks fine, but look, the end of the episode, oh my God. So Robin arrives and I don't think I'm a fan of this look. From top to bottom, it's a chop for me. So we cut to her confessional because she wasn't there for the fight. She said she was still in the building, but she was in the area with producers and she said she heard the mayhem. I guess she didn't come back out. She was just like, oh, they ain't got nothing to do with me. She does say though that Kiana got caught up fighting other people's battles. And I gotta say, I agree with that. I mean, at least she got a few bops in on Sesame Street. So then we see Crystal, Candace's sister, approach Ashley and say she's not happy with her friend. And Ashley's trying to explain her association with Deborah, how she did not expect that from her. And she's trying to reassure her that the only reason she invited her because these are her actual friends that usually support her. Candace's sister then tells Ashley, I hope to never see her again. And I don't want to see my sister potentially get attacked for the second time. You know, she won't have to worry about that now that her sister isn't on the show anymore. I'm just saying. With that said, we see Candace as well as Dorothy. I love Miss Dorothy. Please give her a champagne flute. <laughs> but anywho, um, I saw this tweet and I just thought it was funny. They said, being Candace's sibling had to be exhausting growing up, always having to be ready to fight because of your sister's mouth writing bounce checks. I laughed. So then we got to Candace's confessional. She says, we made it successfully through the Sears fashion show. <laughs> She's then giving her recollection of the fight. She's saying that Deborah approached her and then they're going back and forth. She didn't want to address her. Uh, Deborah lunged at her and before she knew it, Kiana and her were fighting. Candace then says, I don't know, it happened so fast, but I know somehow it's going to be my fault. <laughs> it's sad but true because they definitely was trying to pin it all on Candace. So then last but not least, Wendy arrives. Not a fan of this dress but Eddie's looking very hot. So as soon as she greets Candace and Karen, she's like, well, the last time I saw y'all, we were at the emergency room at 4 a.m. in the morning. So they're talking about Deborah and how it all started. And I agree, like Deborah started this whole thing between Candace and Wendy lying on their men and then trying to get mad because now Sesame Street really stuck. Like people actually calling you Cookie Monster. And you tried to address Candace before on camera. She paid you dust. You tried to do it again. And then tried to get even more reckless with it by antagonizing Candace because you wanted her to take the bait. But unfortunately, we see someone else took the bait and then, you know, someone wound up at a hospital. So now it seems like from their conversation, all eyes are on Ashley now because it was her friend that caused all this. Oh, so Neka arrives. I totally forgot. So she's the last to get there. So then we hear from a bunch of the ladies' conversations. They're just worried how Kay is doing. But we see Kay confirm to Robin that she's doing all right. And allegedly, she had to get stitches on her forehead. Justice for Kay. Like, hopefully, like, after all this, we see her next season, either full-time or in a friend-of position. I would love to see her back. I actually liked her. So then we see Cherise talking to Candace and she's just like, just telling her in like a momish way that, you know, if you really took that bottle and used it, you know you would have been in jail, right? And you know, Candace thanks her for the talk and holding her back and just being there for her. And I know we don't like Charissi, 
but she had a point. So then we cut to Ashley's confessional and she's giving her take on Candace grabbing a bottle. She's saying that it's not a good look for her and Candace ain't gully like that. She wasn't gonna do nothing with the bottle. But she's talking about the image that Candace has had throughout the seasons and that mouth. And I'm just thinking, Ashley, it's not a good look for you to be commenting on it. People also could say this fight wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. So next we see all the ladies together. They're at this high top and Karen wants to address the elephant in the room and they start talking about the fight that happened. Uh, Wendy immediately jumps into her Allie McBeal and says, your friend came with an agenda. First, Ashley says that number one, everyone there was grown, so she's not gonna take accountability for others' actions. Interesting. Ashley continues and says she feels really bad for what happened to Kay, and she's grown to care about her. She cares about Deborah too, and she was just only going by what Deborah told her of uh, you know what Candace said. Wendy then calls out Ashley and says, well, you were there when you saw Candace telling Deborah to get out of her face and when it escalated. Even when NECA came in to break it up as well as um, Kay and Wendy, and it still happened. She threw a drink at Candace. So she came with an agenda. So then we cut to Ashley's confessional and then it looks like she's trying to pin it on Candace because of her mouth. And while it's easy to do so, nah, it was Deborah's fault. Deborah did not have to go over to Candace. She wanted a moment. I'm not sure if she thought the cameras were still up, but she definitely wanted a moment with Candace. She got enraged that Candace didn't want to give her that moment. So she threw a drink on her to further antagonize her. And whatever happened afterward, it is what it is. Ooh, I know social media lit Ashley up, but I know she's probably just going from Deborah's word over Candace's. So I'm really curious what she's gonna say after the reunion, finding out that her friend Deborah lied to her again. Ooh, okay, Karen. She's saying this is a larger message to people who wanna come around and try to fuck us up. <laughs> she says we need to stop allowing people to come around this group that wants to do us harm. Stop bringing this woman on the show. Like, Ashley kept trying to push her on. Even Mia jumps in now and saying, Deborah doubled down. There's no defending her. So now that all the ladies are telling Ashley what time it is, she finally, like, takes some ownership and says, I'm sorry for putting people in this predicament. And she's going to be more conscious of who she invites around the group. And yeah, I'm just like, stop defending her. Like, she's clearly in the wrong. Everybody there seems to be in agreement that this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Cookie Monster. Okay, so now they're getting into the bullshit. Like, Wendy's saying, like, this has been a long time since we can look each other in the eye and converse, and we can move forward as a group. Y'all ain't moving forward. <laughs> I don't believe it. But it looks like they ended on a positive note, but then Giselle wants to add to the group, Damn, like Candace rolled her eyes as soon as Giselle spoke up. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like, Giselle had nothing to do with anything. Like, jeez. Anywho, Giselle thanks the table. Well, those that reached out to her about her dad. And then she points out that, you know, even though her and Karen's relationship was, you know, a little rocky, she still reached out to her when she didn't have to. And Karen said they've been through a lot, but she likes where they are now. And even if they were beefing, it would be the right thing to do in this circle. I'm sorry, I gotta admit that I do love the rivalry and frenemy relationship between Giselle and Karen. So afterwards, we see Mia, like she's on the mic and I guess she's thanking the ladies, the magazines, and then after that, we're treated to the, the end cards. Like, it's over, but we got about, uh, we got about 20 minutes left. So we know what it's dedicated to. Oh, and we also get all the ladies' photo shoots too. Candace is first up. She's Diana Ross. Um, I'm not seeing it. Maybe it's giving mahogany Diana Ross. And it says Candace has been recording new music and plans to shop it to a major label. Good luck with that. She is still focusing on heating up her career before taking her embryos off ice. Now, we also found out that Candace will not be back for season nine. And I was a little gagged by it, but look, I don't mind. I, I don't care for Candace. And I think she was one of the ladies that couldn't move on. Like I've been saying, 
started with Mia and Karen and then cast from there. Anybody else, they could come back or not. Now, I don't see Candace doing music. I can see her taking a Tammy Roman route with her career. I can see her acting more so. But we'll see. She has all this free time ahead of her, um, and she can always come back. So now we're with Wendy, uh, she's Shirley Ralph, and I kind of see it, you know, from back in the day from Dreamgirls. Wendy has self-released her talk show, The Dr. Wendy Show, on her YouTube channel. We talked about that in my last review. You can go see my thoughts on that. Oop, and not shade from production. She's hoping that this new venture is the one that finally sticks. <laughs> uh, shade. So now we have Robin as Mariah Carey. Hmm. I mean, I like the photo. I think it's giving Mariah a little bit. Then we see Robin has signed a lease for her first Glow 30 location and hopes they have doors open in 2024. As for the world's opinion on her and Juan's marriage, the Dixons 100% don't care. And also, we found out this morning that allegedly that Robin is not coming back for season nine as well. It is what it is. Um, we saw that Juan didn't even go to the reunion. Again, she was already on thin ice. I don't care. I, and also, if they had to get rid of Candace, they had to make the stands happy by getting rid of one of the green-eyed bandits. But we'll see if it's true. We don't know yet. So now we have Karen as Lena Horn. She looks good. I, I see it. Karen is renovating her Surrey house and hopes to have it open by 2025. She's also treated herself to a few upgrades, some triple 20 cosmetic tweaks. Now, speaking of the triple 20, didn't she film her birthday? I guess they didn't show it. So now we see Giselle as Beyonce from the Super Bowl. I mean, it's a good Halloween costume for her. Uh, it says Giselle officially launched her GNA clothing line with Ashley. <sighs> Y'all buying that? And then unfortunately, they let us know that Giselle's father passed away shortly after his surgery. So then we move to NECA, who has no photo to critique, and it says that her IUI procedure was unsuccessful. I was wondering. She and Ike will try IVF next, and they will up the romance for their next bathroom rendezvous. Do we think NECA deserves another season? I wouldn't mind if she gets a second chance. If Crystal from Beverly Hills can get three chances, I think NECA deserves one. We'll see. She might be like Anne Marie and just be a one and done. And now Ashley as Dorothy Dandridge. Ashley is actively dating, but she and Michael are still not divorced. Her deadline to sign on the dotted line by the end of the year has come and gone. Thank you, Shady Production. Yeah, um, also, Ashley, I need to hear an announcement from her too, today, because she should not come back either. So then all that's left is Mia. She's still on the mic, and then we see Gordon. He gets on the mic and thanks Mia, you know, being a wonderful mother, great wife, talking about their relationship. We're seeing flashbacks, fades the black, and then we go to three months later. We then see the headline, Mia Thornton and Gordon in their 11-year marriage. So now, the rest of the 20 minutes is solely dedicated to Mia and Gordon. The cameras came back up. So first, we get a confessional with Wendy and Eddie. And it turns out that Gordon, he sent the message to the men's group chat and for them to let their wives know what's going on. So we heard that story. I think it was on TMZ or something that he messaged the group trying to like tell them like, secrets about Mia or just saying that she'd been cheating, just trying to air her out. And I think this was before they announced they were separating. This is so dramatic. <laughs> Not production doing the phone ringing reenactment. Side note, Eddie again, just looking fine in that suit. Mm. So then after that, we cut to Mia and Gordon at their house. It's extremely awkward. So Mia is saying they were separated since July and Gordon is the one that didn't want her to divorce him. Oh, so it started with the trailer for season eight. And Gordon saw uh, the scene where Ashley asked her, did you marry Gordon for his money? And she said, maybe. And he didn't like that. And I think that's when he went to TMZ. But wow, I'm looking at the date of the article. Like that came out in October. So they've been separated like since the summertime. So then we cut to the two of them talking to each other. Uh, she's asking Gordon, how long is she gonna have to sleep in her son's room? And when is he leaving to Charlotte? 
Gordon is pissed. Like, he gives her a date, and he's like, is that not soon enough for you? Okay, Gordon with the first bomb drop. I know you've been having an affair, like, 10 years. But before we were even married, they're going back and forth. Gordon says, the kids were telling me you were sleeping with this guy. So we have a name, Mr. Ink. Uh, she brought him on Watch What Happens Live, by the way. But whose name are they bleeping out? Are they bleeping out his real name? So now we're finding out more about this Mr. Ink. And he's known Mia since they were in high school. And it looks like he's always been in her life, even when she was married to Gordon. She said in her confessional that Gordon knew that they were sleeping together because she told him, and this is when they first married, and then that's when they went to counseling. Child, they are laying it all out. I can't believe Gordon is saying this information. He says he had prostate cancer, his wasn't working like it should. And he said for his 70th birthday, he said, go do your thing. Just don't embarrass me and don't bring the kids into it. So they had an arrangement from jump. Side note, my pizza just got here, uh, but I'm multitasking right now. I got a long day, but I just can't believe when I'm watching right now, like I was gagged the entire time. Like they are being hella transparent. Like this is what we wanted from Juan and Robin. And we didn't get it. Gordon is pissed. And even though they had an open relationship, he's mad because she kept throwing it in his face and the kids were brought around. Now, I want to know, whose side are you on in this? But I'm just like, um, Gordon, didn't you cheat on your wife for Mia? So it is what it is to me. We cut to Mia's confessional and she says she's always been tossing around the idea of divorce. The bombs continue to drop. Like Gordon admits that he took her phone from her for two hours. Then Mia adds on that he locked her in a room. And Gordon's trying to justify that. When Mia brings up that Gordon locked her in a room, he now doesn't want to continue the conversation. Oh Lord. Oh, oh my God. Like it looked like he ready to leave, but she's still trying to talk to him. So then he says, well, why do their son thinks that Mr. Ink is his dad? Mia looks a little gagged that he said that. And she says, Gordon, that's not fair. He tells her, if you want fair, go to the carnival. We cut to Mia's confessional and my God. Like, it's like I'm watching a soap opera. She says that she was pregnant and she told Gordon that there's a chance that this baby might not be yours. And he said that was fine. He still wanted to be with her and said that he was going to raise the child as if it was his. And she continues and says there has not been a paternity test. So that child who is still adolescent, whose birth is being talked about right now on national television, he doesn't know who his dad is and she doesn't either. No confirmation? That is wild. She's definitely coming back. And I think she's going to do the paternity test. Like, they have to at this point. That was the real gag. I could not believe. Like, whew. They, this was an episode. Like, from beginning to end, they, they delivered on the finale. So they're still talking. And Gordon brings up to Mia that, you know, the show, of course, she's using this as leverage now that she has some money to leave him now. After all he's done for her. Because, you know, he's trying to insinuate that she was a gold digger. I just want to know, how come she just didn't be with her soulmate instead of G? But I'm thinking, you know, she married for financial security. And look, it seemed like they were very transparent with each other in the beginning and for years. And if Mia really laid all this out for Gordon, then it's his own fault. Speaking of that, Mia says in her confessional that if she's worried about financial security, she would have left him seven or eight years ago. So she's trying to say that she did love him. But do y'all believe that? Because y'all know Mia be lying. Lord, but Gordon not done yet. He says he is willing to set this aside and still be together for the sake of the kids? After all that, after all what you told her? Mia seems confused by Gordon's response. She just said... She don't know anything right now. Like, she needs some time, let the temperature cool down. And then Gordon says, well, why don't you stop seeing him? He is very jealous of this man. And he did say, I mean, according to Mia, that this person was her soulmate. But I'm just like, okay, so y'all had this open relationship deal. And I feel like it's the age-old situation of having an open relationship until feelings get involved from the third party. Gordon then airs her out again and says, you were sleeping with him two days ago. Well, according to Mia's confessional, she still wants ink in her life. And he said he's waiting on her whenever she's ready. So the credits are rolling. 
And Mia's just saying that she's not going to be the best version of herself if they're still, like, in this space of their relationship. And Gordon, it looks like he's just wiping his hands of the situation. He's like, I'm not going to beg somebody to stay when they don't want to. So if you feel you need to go, bye. And that is where the episode ends, y'all. What a finale. What a finale. That had my attention the moment I pressed play. Oh, there's a lot to talk about, y'all. Uh, I am going to do a live with Alice. Just a cute 20, 30 minutes to talk about the finale and, you know, who's leaving. But yeah, please let me know what you thought about this episode, whose side you're on in this situation, and overall. Season as a whole, a D. That's what I give a D. It would have been an F, but this episode definitely delivered. Mia and Karen, they saved the show. So we can start with those two and then cast around them. May the odds be in the other ladies' favors. But with that, y'all, you know, again, keep it cute in the comments. Pretty please. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all for the reunion. Bye.